hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Bayern Munich Coach to Glory. This is episode Atta. That means episode 8 in Swedish. Let me know in the comments down below what does episode 9 mean in your language, boys. Go ahead and help me out because now it's time to jump into the transfer window with 21 million in the budget and hopefully we will be able to buy two players in this episode. We need a new left back and we also need a new backup striker. Today's episode is gonna be massive for this season and hopefully we can come out of it saying we did very well. Let's do this. If you guys are hyped about the transfer window episode as much as I am, please make sure to hit that like button on this video. The good thing about the buying Munich career mode is in January, there's literally no games. We basically have four games of transfer window dealings without having to skip games and all of that stuff that we have to do in other leagues. This is the perfect opportunity to take our time, make the right decisions, and yes, get the right players into the squad. For the reserves team, guys, here is one thing that I realized that I didn't realize before. This Malic guy, who's only 19, he can play left back and he is a four-star skiller. Now, he's not the most defensive left back, but it would do. So we can potentially put him into the left back position and bring in a new right back instead into this new, into this team, into this reserves team squad. So that's what I'm gonna focus on in the transfer window. I had no idea, I only realized that today. Um, this guy is a four star skiller, so obviously I would love to use him in that left back position. So far he has been used down the right hand side. He is right footed though, so that's a bit of a shame for a left back uh, being right footed. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but in terms of physical attributes, he looks amazing. In terms of dribbling and all of that, he looks incredible as well. And then he is obviously six foot tall, which is just about enough to put him into that position. He also has 80 jumping paired with those stats, which is very, very good. Another thing that I could potentially do, I could pop um, Cabral into the right back position, but I don't want to do that. But Higuain definitely has to go. Now, last episode, guys, we talked about the YouTube scouts. And here is a very, very good scout report from CFM17. He says, I know that you, of course, have heard at least the prospect in the 18-year-old USA international, Timothy Vea. And I think that this would be an absolute brilliant idea because he will obviously be high rated and he will slot right into the reserves team as also due to his six foot one in height in great sprint speed as it starts at an 83 rating and his age 18 and also being a world-class finisher. I don't think that was an English sentence, but it's okay. He says, I also think that this may be the man to carry on to other career modes as I think it will be a great storyline to have Timothy Vea trying to beat his dad in domestic and continental success, which I appreciate. The other thing is he says he has high medium work rates, which is obviously great for an attacker. Can also play on the wing. Oh, that's impressive. I didn't know that about him. So that could be a good thing about him. And he says, I will thank you for the consideration of this suggestion. Now, Timothy Vea, he has been suggested a lot throughout the entire year, but never really fit into my project. But now it could be the time to bring him in. Where does he play right now? He's playing at PSG. Um, six foot one tall, 20 years old by now. Let's let's start to put him onto the onto the transfer hub at first. Here's another suggestion, and this one's a big one from the YouTube Scout Network. This is from Nightmare, and he says Tilo Kera is an amazing player. Can play all across the defensive back line. A young player that has potential up to 87. Has a five-star weak foot. German nationality, which makes it a realistic transfer. Balanced stats that can be improved, and will cost you around 15 to 25 million. Tilo Kera who has just recently joined PSG, yet another PSG player actually, which is quite odd to see. Both of the players that were suggested to me are PSG players and Tilo is currently worth 25 million. The question is, how do we get him into the team? We do not have the funds to bring him into the squad at the moment, but he would be a massive signing for that reserves team as a left back or right back. He can play on both positions, which is perfect because Malic is a left back originally. So we can put him into this team as a right back and use him in that spot. But obviously 25 million is a massive amount. So we need to let go of some players, boys. You know what I just realized? I have Luis Felipe. I still have this guy. 
Hold on. Guys, we completely forgot about Luis Felipe. He's out on loan at um, Juventus right now. He's 80 rated, centre back. He has a lot of potential still. And we could easily, easily save ourselves a lot of money. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I, I'm sorry for all those people that have suggested players and everything. I had no idea. And it seems like you guys forgot as well. No one really commented about this. And if you did, I'm sorry for missing it. But if you did suggest this, this is a great idea. We have completely forgotten about him. I loaned him out in the first place to kind of like glitch his potential. So now we're recalling him. Luis Felipe is back, boys, and he is looking incredible, which means what we can do right now is we can put Cabral into the right back position because he does have the pace. He can deal with the right back position. And then Luis Felipe is returning into the squad. That's perfect. 80 rated. Um, high defensive work rate, 6 foot 2 tall from Brazil, 79 acceleration, 73 sprint speed, which is great. The strength isn't really the best. Interceptions is looking good. Ball control is okay. Marking is good. Slide tackle, stand tackle looks very, very good. And boys, with that, we have just saved ourselves millions and millions. And now we can invest it into the striking position, which is a great thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scout these players. 18 days remaining. Timothy Vea, we are waiting for the scout report on him. We will be scouting a couple more players though, not just Timothy Vea. I'm gonna be looking for a couple more because we do have a lot of money now that we can spend on this backup striker position and we need to make the right decision. So guys, what we have done right now is we have put a lot of players onto the scouting list. We are currently scouting all of these players. Timothy Vea. In about 18 days, we will know what's happening with all these players, what their ratings are, how they are looking and how much value they have, how much we have to spend on all of these players. Vea is being scouted. Ozi Men is being scouted, who had an incredible season in Belgium, I believe. Um, Danjuma Grunefeld is being scouted. He can play as a striker as well. These guys are very versatile. They can play in many positions. Vea can play in two. Um, Grunefeld can play in three positions right there. He does have some really, really good stats on him. He could potentially be a beast. Um, Onyekuru, I've only put onto this list because I've played against him on Ultimate Team. And he was unbelievable. He is unstoppable. And because of that, we have put him onto the scouting list and we are waiting 18 days it will take for us to know what's happening. Up until then, maybe we can sell one or two players. One last player I'm going to be adding to that list is Krepin Diata. We're going to be scouting him as well. So in 18 days, we'll see. Tony Kroos has joined Spurs. Okay. He has moved from Real Madrid to Spurs. Finally, we get a transfer off of Higuain. That is perfect. 21 million for Barcelona. Let's negotiate, boys. Maybe we can get a little bit more out of this. That would be perfect. Let's go. We could sign even more players. And that is something I like doing. And you guys love it too. So let's see if we can get like 25 million out of this deal from Barcelona. If that is something that we can do, I'd be very happy. All right, they're saying 21.3. We're going to say 22.5. How about that? Come on. Remove sell on clause. Submit offer. Come on. Yes, come on. Higuain is finally leaving the team. That's what we wanted to see. It took us long enough to get rid of him. And he's officially sold. 19 million have been added into the transfer budget, which is great because now I believe we are around 40 million. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. That is amazing. Now, we can make some signings. The question is, who is it going to be? We're going to be bringing in a backup striker, obviously. But now, we can afford the highest rated one. The best looking one. And maybe even an even better one than we have gone for so far. Because we do have 40 million and that's legit. The only position where I'm looking at and saying, that needs improvement in this team. Hmm. Do I go for the youngsters or do I bring in an absolute beast? I have just researched the release clauses for strikers, boys, and I found one player and one player only. Actually, two players. Leia Izeka was the first one. He has a release clause of 25 million. And then we also have Santi Mina. 25-year-old Santi Mina with a release clause of 38.1 million and his value is set at 37.5. If we would have wanted to buy him, we'd have to spend at least 50 million on Santi Mina. That is a big option. But before we do so, 
I'm still gonna give a chance to these youngsters because I would obviously love to bring in one of those younger players. But then again, Santimina isn't really the oldest. He's only 25. Perfect age to become a player for this team right here. But we're waiting until the 19th to see the scat reports on all the players. And then we are gonna be making a very educated decision the scout reports have come in and i've not been this excited in a long time i want to check out what these players ratings are so timothy vea is 76 rated unbelievable speed which is great agility isn't that good but it's okay his jumping isn't the best so for headers he's not going to be good strength isn't good reactions isn't good attack positioning is awful for a striker 66 Boys, I'm sorry, even if you made a scout report on him, I can't buy players with stats this bad. We move on to Aussie Men, he is 79 rated, 80 acceleration, 86 sprint speed, agility and balance are not that great, jumping is good, stamina is good, strength is very good, aggression is good, composure is terrible. Hmm, Aussie Men, I don't know about you mate, composure doesn't look that good. His shot power is great. Finishing is on 80. How much finishing on Vea? Let's check that out real quick. 80 as well. So Aussie men, definitely the better choice between Vea and him. Uh, then we have Grunefeld, 4 star, 4 star, which is a massive advantage over both of these players. Um, and then we go into the stats, 91 acceleration, 83 sprint speed, 80 agility, 80 balance, very nice, stamina is looking good as well, strength is good, it's not terrible, it's good, um, his attack positioning is okay, it's probably better than these guys, I mean it's around the same with Aussie men, but much better than Timothy Weah, then composure is on 73, Aussie Man was on 62, Wea was on 66. So Grunefeld actually, despite being a left mid, right mid and striker if needed, he has more composure than the other guys. Great shot power, great dribbling, great ball control. Finishing is good enough for me with that shot power. Short passing is good. This does look like the better player. Onyekuru though. Now this is a beast, isn't he? Four star, four star as well. He is five foot 10, he is five foot nine. Onyekuru. Whoa, whoa, those stats are insane. Unbelievable sprint speed, amazing agility and balance, unbelievable jumping, stamina looks ridiculous. Uh, attack positioning isn't that great, composure isn't that good, shot power isn't that good, but he has 89 finishing. He is the best finisher out of all of these players. I think Onyekuru is my first choice so far. Diata, next choice. Left mid, right mid, striker, four star weak foot, three star skills. Unbelievable physical stats yet again. 96 sprint speed, 97, uh, no, 96 acceleration, 97 sprint speed, 89 agility. Balance is looking very good. Jumping is looking very good. Stamina is amazing. Composure, is that the best we had so far? Yes, he has the most composure out of all of these players. That is good to see. Strength is terrible though, reactions as well but he is making up for it in all of the other stats. 74 shot power with 75 finishing. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Injury prone as well. No, 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 we don't need that. We don't need injury prone players. Santimina now. <sighs> Despite being 85 rated, he has 70 composure. But then I believe in other stats, he's just making up for it. 88 attack positioning. That's something that all these players don't have. Agility is good. Balance is good. Jumping is okay. Stamina is okay. Strength and reactions are very good. Not the fastest, but also not the slowest of players. Um, ball control, dribbling is looking good. Finishing is incredible. Shot power is very good as well. But I think I've made my choice, guys. And my choice is going to be on Yakuru. I, I love his stats. I really, really do. He just looks incredible. Along with the 89 finishing, we can work on the shot power in the training sessions. But man, those physical attributes just look unbelievable. And I really want to try them out. So we're going to go for Onyekuru, boys. Oh, oh, oh. Onyekuru. Oh, oh, oh. Onyekuru. Let's get him into the team. Let's make an offer as the camera turns off because it's embarrassed about my dance moves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and offer them a nice little offer of 30 million. Will they accept it? Yes, they will. Let's go. Onyekuru is about to join. He's also only 23 years old, so quite a young player right here that we're about to buy from Everton. Uh, we're going to offer him a... 
What am I gonna offer him? I'm gonna offer him a important... Is he gonna be happy with rotation? Let's see what he says about rotation. Is that okay for him? He's actually okay with that. That's great. I love the fact that he has a very specific haircut as well. Four-year contract. That's totally fine with me. Onyekuru. I want to give him a release clause though. I feel like this could potentially become one of my favorite players and I want to take him with me. So he's currently worth 23 mil. We're going to give him a release clause of 35 million right here. Is he going to accept that? Yes, he is. Perfect. Now into the wages. That's good. Looking very good. Remove the bonus. Submit the offer. Is he joining? Yes, he is. 56k. Onyekuru, welcome to Bayern Munich. I truly believe in you, mate. You seem to be the best finisher out of all these players. Show it to me when we use you. And the good thing about this is as well, we can use him as a super sub for the first team and he will be running past people with ease. I love this. We're going to be putting him into the attack positioning improvement uh, as well. So we're going to improve his shot power and his attack positioning for sure. Hopefully that is within one um, training session. High, low work rates. He just looks like the best possible player we could have brought him into our team. I'm so happy and I hope you guys are as well. Here's a comment from Amilcar Mendy and he says, you could give Werner 9, Pepe 11 and Davies 19. Guys, do you not understand? I want to keep the numbers as they are. I'm not going to change the numbers again. One thing you can do though is you can suggest me a number for Onyekuru. What number should we give him? We're going to go through the numbers that are available right now and you guys can decide which one you want to give him. As you can tell, there's not many he can pick. He can pick number six, but I'm, I'm not giving him number six right here. Um, Judy has number 10. Do we take away number 10 from him? Or do we move on and give him a different number? Maybe number 12? For now, I'm going to give Onyekuru number 12. You guys let me know which number you think would be well suited for this man in our reserves team right now. Bayern Munich currently in that second position in the Bundesliga. Werder Bremen is up in first and everyone is fighting for that first position at the moment. There is no clear favorite and I love it. Werder Bremen though. Ooh, they're our next opponent. First against second. Let's do this. I'm excited. Now that we have made the signing of Onyekuru boys, we can finally jump into the Youth Academy. We now have six months to go and we have a five-star, five-star scout from Belgium, which is perfect. We're going to be sending him to Germany immediately. We're going to be sending him for six months. Look for any type. Just find me some great talents. Hugo Peters, he's the new scout. Oh, and you know what? We still have a lot of money, so let's buy another one. Wukoja, or whatever his name is. He is going to be sent to... Let's send him to... I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling Italy for whatever reason. Italy, there you go. Here's a comment coming in from Abdullah Ali. He says, um, hashtag in real life. What do you think about Fela Mendy signing for Real Madrid? Um, Real Madrid have completed the Future Stars trio. EA released the Future Stars in FIFA Ultimate Team. Eder Militao, Real Madrid got him. Jovic, Real Madrid got him. Fela Mendy, they got him. It looks like someone at Real Madrid is definitely a huge fan of Ultimate Team and they have brought in all of those future stars. Now, here's the point. They are future stars. These players are not already unbelievably world-class material. The only one that I look at and, and think this guy is world-class already is Jovic. With Felo Mendy and Militao, I'm not there yet because Felo Mendy has so far played in Liga. 1. How will he play in La Liga? How will Eder Militao cope with the pressure that is at Real Madrid, especially for Brazilian players? Um, those have had great transfers to Real Madrid and a lot of times they have been the ones that turned out to be in flops. So hopefully all those players will do well for them and Real Madrid can go back to their old strength. Now, obviously, I don't want them to be winning the Champions League title or anything like that. I just want them to be good and competitive because then football is much more enjoyable to watch, especially La Liga wise. It would finally make the league more interesting. Real Madrid with Fialo Mendy have brought in a great left back. I wonder where Marcelo goes. I feel like he has said multiple times that Real Madrid is his home. He doesn't want to move on and maybe Marcelo takes on this challenge and says hey you know what you're buying all these young players I'm gonna show you that I'm the better player and maybe Marcelo will still be in a starting lineup who knows what's gonna happen it's a good signing though but I really wonder what's gonna happen with Marcelo oh and also in terms of fan objectives boys new robbery has been updated we have moved it up to 40 we have to get 40 scorer points with the new robbery partnership 
in our team, which is Pepe and Nabri. They have done really well. 23 is what they are at already. And Pepe could be getting another, another assist right here. No, he won't. But we're going to move on and say that the Canadian Wonder Kit is looking quite good as well. We are on 5 out of 15. And one of our first objectives has been completed this season. The Neuer still got it, has been completed. And I love to see that. He was an incredible center midfielder, Goretzka. Ooh, not bad. That left-footed shot was actually very solid. The cross is coming in towards Sule. Can he get it? Yes, he can, but he can't get it on target. On Yakuru, oh, oh, oh. I don't know why I have that in my mind. Where does that come from? There is a song like that, right? There is like a song about, like a kid's song or something. Timo, Timo. Here we go, Toliso. Ah, Toliso doesn't get that pass through. Timo gets it again. Timo looking for the middle. Kai, 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 Kai. You gotta do better. Finn Bogason, good pass. And Jamie Vardy. Jamie freaking Vardy, who now plays for Werder Bremen. Scores against us again. I see Jamie. I see what's going on. He's also doing his signature celebration. We're already down 1-0 against Werder Bremen, who have the best defense in the league. It's the best defense versus the best offense in the league. That matchup has been played multiple times. For now, it seems like the best defense actually has the best offense. Sula, not good enough in that position. And we do concede easily. Way too easily. <sighs> Sula, what a tackle. And there goes Sula's pass. Kai, come on. Oh, Pepe, that pass is ridiculously bad. You have to do better there. That could have been or should have been an easy goal for our team. But instead, we have lost that on a massive opportunity there. Goretzka, what a pass into Pepe. Pepe is getting past another one. Pepe is fighting for it. Pepe falls down. He still gets control, but he loses it immediately. Still waiting for an opportunity to pass it through. Yes, here we go. There it is. Kai Havertz. Come on, it's your chance to get an assist, Goretzka. <sighs> They're sitting too deep. They're sitting way too deep, and I can't get past their defensive line. There we go. That's a good one. Kai, come on, pass it. Pepe. Pepe. Oh, it's green timed as well. Kai Havertz. Yes! Kai scores rather than getting the assist, assist which is okay. I just needed that goal right before half time. That is crucial against the first place team in the league. I don't know how Pepe misses that. It was a green timed. I guess I put a little bit too much power on it, but Kai Havertz just about gets it past the keeper, who for whatever reason just stands still for a second, and it's the second goal of King Kai. Let's go. Here goes Nabri. Nabri now on the counter attack. Kai Havertz is in a good position. Kai plays it to Pepe. Pepe. Bad movement there, but we're going to take it. And that could have been a penalty, but we didn't get a pen. That's a bit unlucky right there. I thought we could have done better. Cross coming in. Nabri on the volley. Nabri again. Yes. The comeback is on against Vera Bremen. Jamie Vardy, where you at? Where you at? Where is he? Shh. There you are. There you are, Jamie. Shush. Shush. Let's go. Golasso, Nabri. Well done, mate. And it is against his former team as well. Nabri used to play for Werder Bremen for a little bit. And here he goes again. Nabri wanting to damage his team a lot more than he already did. Didn't work out there, though. Pepe Havertz on the volley. And it is a penalty. That is the most ridiculous penalty. Werder Bremen is falling apart, boys. And I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it. Now, we are pushing Timo Werner to become the top scorer of the league. So, we're going to take this with him. We're going to go down the left and we're going to fool the goalkeeper. Timo Werner, Werner the burner, is back again, scoring his goals. How many has he scored this season? Let's check it out real quick after this, which, by the way, is a perfectly taken penalty right here. Unbelievable. Timo Werner with his 13th goal of the season. Me likey. Oh, that's a good ball, you know. That's a really good ball. Lato, good cross. No, ah, oh, come on. We had a brain runner back into the game. 3-2. I believe that is Davy Klassen who scores the goal. The man who moved from Everton over to the Bundesliga and has done really well for Werder Bremen. That's very unfortunate, but I think it might be time. It might be time to bring on the secret weapon that is Onyekuru. He's going to get his debut today, which I'm very much looking forward to. He's going to come in for 
anyone in the attack. It doesn't matter where he plays. Nabri is going to get subbed off. Onyekuru is going to come in down the left-hand side. He is right-footed. Let's keep that in mind. Harit, no, Davis is going to come in down the right. Actually, we can switch this around. Onyekuru right-footed, Davis left-footed. So that works for us. And then we're going to bring on Florentino to hold on to this result. Sargent, a very talented player from the USA, is jumping in there. He's getting the cross in. We do get it away. Come on now. Yes, Hernandez. Well done. I see you, Onyekuru. That pass is for you, my man. What an unbelievable pass that is. Onyekuru on the run. Stops. Get past no one. Unlucky. Good ball inside. They shoot immediately, which they probably shouldn't have done, but we'll take it. Great pass into Florentino. Florentino to Havertz. Down to the left we go. Davies with great run. On the far side is Onyekuru. Are you kidding me, Davies? You're left-footed, mate. That's exactly what you needed to do. And that's your cross. Really? Waiting for the opportunity to play an amazing through ball. And he does so. <sighs> Referee. That is at least a yellow card for our opponent. And he does get it. I believe he deserves even more than that. That is terribly, terribly done by the defender there. The cross is very bad. But we can hold on to this. If we can... That's a three-point game against a massive opponent. Kai Havertz. Kai. Kai. Flicks it up one more time. Ah, I tried to score something nice. Onyekuru getting in there. He has the jumping. He heads it. Oh, Pavlenka gets to it. And that's one thing I wanted to try out. I wanted to see how good Onyekuru is on headers. He's now going to be running inside. Can he get this? Yes, he can, I believe. He does. What? I mean, I've won. Don't get me wrong. I won, which I'm very happy about. But please someone explain me that last position. So Onyekuru heads the ball. It doesn't hit the target. Kimmich is in the perfect position to just knee it in to do this or to do this. But this is what he does. Matrix. Bro. Get the freaking ball. Well, at least we have some good news right here, boys. We have overtaken the first position again. Bayern Munich is back into that first spot. Frankfurt in second. Wolfsburg in third. Werder Bremen in fourth. Stuttgart, Mainz, the top six within only three points of each other. That is unbelievable. I love the competition so far in the Bundesliga. It is actually very exciting. I didn't think it would be this weird though because it's teams that i didn't expect up there that I, i'm currently fighting against so it's a bit odd but we move on and we have the game against hata right here which we will sim and i don't know what, what to expect is it an, a home game if it is a home game that'd be perfect for our reserves team i still wonder though what it is we will get to see it in just a second when the simulation finishes it is an away game now that is interesting who do we play against in the, in the German Cup after this? Hanover in the quarterfinals. Are we playing at home by any chance? No, we are not. I think I'm going to play the first team. Ah, I don't know. It's two away games back to back. I think the Bundesliga is a little bit more important to me. So we're going to play with the first team against Hatta right here. And hope to get a good result. I am thinking it's going to be a draw. That's what I'm thinking. But I think Havertz is going to score. That's my prediction for today, boys. Let's see. So far, nothing. So far, absolutely nothing. Still nothing. Oh, Timo. Let's go, Timo. Keep it up, my man. He's scoring against Hata and they have received a red card, which means they're going to score a goal and get... get. Yep. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's 10 men. I knew it, man. It's, it's obvious. If your opponent gets a red card, you shouldn't be happy. You should be like, oh my God, I'm about to concede a goal. That's how you I should feel because that is what happens every time. Well, the transfer window has now come to an end. Just so you guys know, the transfer window is finished and we haven't sold anyone or bought anyone because obviously we only have 2.2 million left right there. Once again, man, I want to give a shout out to everyone that has left scout reports yesterday. I want to do this at the end of the video right now. I want to give a shout out to everyone that I saw that posted a scout report yesterday slash today. First of all, it's Celtic Gamer. 
Scottish Pro. Both of you guys have posted scat reports in the England section. I really do appreciate it. Then we had other ones. Checkler IG. Hogan Lol is uh, Logan Paul. Uh, both of you guys have uh, posted scat reports for Spain. I do really appreciate that, boys. Thank you, thank you so much. The next one came in from um, Hedtib, HMS, and Peppermint. All of you have posted scat reports in Germany. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for posting those scat reports. And then we also had a couple coming in from uh, the France region. Nightmare, thank you for your scat report on Tilo Kera. Uh, CFM, thank you for yours on Timothy Wea. Royal Cannon, thank you for yours on Ismail Lassar. In the rest of the world section though, we got only basically flooded with links which is not appreciated but then someone else actually sultan put in a very good scat report for two players so thank you to all of those people that have posted their scout reports guys i really really do appreciate it keep it up whenever the transfer window comes up and i'm asking for specific players to bring into our team go ahead and help us out obviously this time i originally wanted to go for timothy Weya, which was the player that i showcased and i wanted to give the scout the props he deserved but Sadly, we saw them after scouting them. We saw how bad some of these stats are. And I do truly believe that Onyekuru was the right choice for this team. Thank you though for watching. The transfer window is over. Finally, we can focus on chasing them titles, boys, and testing out the new players. I can't wait to play a full game with Onyekuru. I'm very excited to play with him. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Player of the episode is gonna be Kai Havertz in this one. Have a great day. Take care. Peace.